A gospel is an account describing the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. The most widely known examples are the four canonical Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John which are included in the New Testament. But the term is also used to refer to apocryphal Gospels, non-canonical Gospels, Jewish Christian Gospels, and Gnostic Gospels. Christianity places a high value on the four canonical Gospels, which it considers to be a revelation from God and central to its belief system. Christianity traditionally teaches that the four canonical Gospels are an accurate and authoritative representation of the life of Jesus. But more liberal churches and many scholars believe that not everything contained in the Gospels is historically reliable. For example, Professor of Religion Linda Woodhead notes some scholarship reinforces the claim that the Gospels' birth and resurrection narratives can be explained as attempts to fit Jesus's life into the logic of Jewish expectation. However, New Testament scholar N. T. Wright holds firmly to the historical authenticity of the death and resurrection of Jesus, stating that of the whole Bible, this is the story with the most overwhelming historical evidence. Etymology. The word gospel derives from the Old English god spell, meaning good news, or glad tidings, and is a calc of the Greek word epsilon alpha gamma gamma epsilon lambda iota omicron nu, euangelion or in Aramaic. The gospel was considered the good news of the coming kingdom of Messiah and of redemption through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. The central Christian message. The Greek word euangelion is also the source of the terms evangelist and evangelism in English. The authors of the four canonical Christian gospels are known as the four evangelists. Usage. Paul the Apostle used the term Epsilon Alpha Gamma Gamma Epsilon Lambda Iota Omicron Nu when he reminded the people of the church at Corinth of the gospel I preach to you. The earliest extant use of gospel to denote a particular genre of literature dates to the 2nd century. Justin Martyr in the Apology wrote of Dot the Apostles, in the memoirs composed by them, which are called Gospels. More generally, Gospels compose a genre of early Christian writings. Gospels that did not become canonical also circulated in early Christianity. Many, such as the work known today as Gospel of Thomas, lack the narrative framework typical of a gospel. Development and Composition John Riches states, Many scholars doubt that the gospels were written by eyewitnesses as their attributions seem to suggest. There is too much evidence of reworking oral traditions and of straight borrowing from other Gospels to make this likely, for example. The vast majority of material in Mark is also present in either Luke or Matthew or both, suggesting that Mark was a source for Matthew and Luke. The four canonical Gospels were probably all written by the end of the first century. But they did not yet at that time have a consistent narrative. In 170 Tatian sought to find a solution by composing a single narrative out of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. With some additional oral material, the gospel passages themselves can be unclear, and some of the messages within are straightforwardly ambiguous and intended to be metaphorical or poetic. Synoptic Gospels the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are considered synoptic Gospels on the basis of many similarities between them that are not shared by the Gospel of John. Synoptic means here that they can be seen or read together, indicating the many parallels that exist among the three. The synoptic Gospels are the source of many popular stories, parables, and sermons, such as Jesus's humble birth in Bethlehem, the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, the Last Supper, and the Great Commission. The fourth Gospel, the Gospel of John, presents a very different picture of Jesus and his ministry from the synoptics. In differentiating history from invention, some historians interpret the Gospel accounts skeptically but generally regard the synoptic Gospels as including significant amounts of historically reliable information about Jesus. Canonical Gospels 
Of the many Gospels written in antiquity, only four Gospels came to be accepted as part of the New Testament, or canonical. An insistence upon there being a canon of four Gospels, and no others, was a central theme of Aeneas of Lyons. 185. In his central work, Adversus Heresies Aeneas denounced various early Christian groups that use only one gospel, such as Martianism which used only Martian's version of Luke, or the Ebionites, who seem to have used an Aramaic version of Matthew as well as groups that embraced the texts of newer writings, such as the Valentinians. Aeneas declared that the four he espoused were the four pillars of the church. It is not possible that there can be either more or fewer than four, he stated, presenting as logic the analogy of the four corners of the earth and the four winds. His image, taken from Ezekiel chapter 1, or Revelation chapter 4 verses 6 to 10, of God's throne borne by four creatures with four faces, the four had the face of a man, and the face of a lion, on the right side, and the four had the face of an ox on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle, equivalent to the four-formed gospel, is the origin of the conventional symbols of the evangelists. Lion, Bull, Eagle, Man. Aeneas was ultimately successful in declaring that the four Gospels collectively, and exclusively these four, contained the truth. He also supported reading each Gospel in light of the others. By the turn of the 5th century, the Catholic Church in the West, under Pope Innocent I, recognized a biblical canon including the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which had been previously established at a number of regional synods, namely the Council of Rome, the Synod of Hippo, and two synods of Carthage. This canon, which corresponds to the modern Catholic canon, was used in the Vulgate, an early 5th century translation of the Bible made by Jerome under the commission of Pope Damasus I in 382. Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of Mark, Gospel of Luke, Gospel of John. There was also another order, the, a Western order of the Gospels, so called because it is typical for the manuscripts which are usually a representative of the Western text type, Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of John, Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Mark. This order is found in the following manuscripts. Beza, Monachensis, Washingtonianis, Tischendorfianis IV, and CLO 234. Although there is no set order of the four Gospels in patristic lists or discussions, Moody Smith suggests that the standard order of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John projects a kind of intention that can scarcely be ignored, in what he calls a mild form of reader criticism. Greg Goswell suggests a possible rationale that the commission at the end of Matthew is in part fulfilled by the subsequent Gospels, while for Luke, the preface to Luke is a possible explanation for that Gospel's canonical placement after Matthew and Mark, for its non-pejorative reference to previous attempts at writing an account of what Jesus said and did can be understood in canonical context as referring to the Gospels of Matthew and Mark. Goswell concludes by suggesting that the self-reference to this book in John chapter 20 verse 30 can be taken as an implicit acknowledgement of other books, namely the three preceding Gospels. Medieval copies of the four canonical Gospels are known as Gospel books or also simply as Gospels. Notable examples include the Lindisfarne Gospels, the Barberini Gospels, Lichfield Gospels and the Vienna Coronation Gospels the Book of Kells and the Ada Gospels or the Ebo Gospels. Origin Biblical scholars generally agree that early oral traditions about Jesus, along with collections of accounts, preceded the canonical Gospels. The dedicatory preface of the Gospel of Luke testifies to the existence of several accounts of the life of Jesus by the time of its composition. The term Luke uses is a term used in classical Greek for any historical narrative. The term Gospel is not used in the New Testament text for any of the canonical Gospels. Although in later centuries a traditional reading of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 18, the brother, whose praise is the gospel, was to sometimes identify this with Luke, and consequently the gospel of Luke, 
The majority view today is that Mark is the first gospel, with Matthew and Luke borrowing passages both from that gospel and from at least one other common source, lost to history, termed by scholars, Q. This view is known as the two-source hypothesis. The two-gospel hypothesis, in contrast, says that Matthew was written first, and then Luke the Evangelist wrote his gospel before Mark the Evangelist wrote his gospel. John was written last and shares little with the synoptic gospels. The gospels were apparently composed in stages. Mark's traditional ending was most likely composed early in the 2nd century and appended to Mark in the middle of that century. The birth and infancy narratives apparently developed late in the tradition. Luke and Matthew may have originally appeared without their first two chapters. The consensus among biblical scholars is that all four canonical Gospels were originally written in Greek, the lingua franca of the Roman Orient. Dating estimates for the dates when the canonical gospel accounts were written vary significantly, and the evidence for any of the dates is scanty, because the earliest surviving complete copies of the gospels date to the 4th century and because only fragments and quotations exist before that. Scholars use higher criticism to propose likely ranges of dates for the original gospel autographs. Scholars variously assess the majority view as follows. Mark, c. 68, to 73, 65 to 70, Matthew, c. 70 to 100, 80 to 85, Luke, c. 80 to 100, with most arguing for somewhere around 85, 80 to 85, John, c. 90 to 100, 90 to 110, the majority view is that it was written in stages, so there was no one date of composition. Location Matthew was probably written in Syria, perhaps in Antioch, an ancient Christian center. Mark has traditionally been associated with Peter's preaching in Rome, and it is well suited to a Roman audience. Various cities have been proposed for the origin of Luke, but there is no consensus on the matter. Ephesus, in western Anatolia, is a popular scholarly choice for the place of origin for the Gospel of John. Following Raymond Brown's postulation of a Johannina community having been responsible for John's Gospel and letters, other scholars have identified localized communities behind each of the other Gospels and Q. This assumes the relative isolation of early Christian communities in which distinctive traditions concerning Jesus throve. Other scholars have questioned this hypothesis and have stressed the constant communication between early Christian communities. Oral tradition One of the most important concerns in accurately accounting for an oral Jesus tradition is the model of transmission used. Form criticism was developed primarily by the German scholars Karl Ludwig Schmidt, Martin Dibelius, and Rudolf Bultmann. The oral model developed by the form critics drew heavily on contemporary theory of folkloric transmission of oral material, and partly as a result of this form criticism posited that the Jesus tradition was transmitted informally, added to freely, and was uncontrolled. However, today it is no exaggeration to claim that a whole spectrum of main assumptions underlying Boltman's synoptic tradition must be considered suspect. A number of other models have been proposed which posit greater control over the tradition, to varying degrees. For example, largely in response to form critical scholarship, Birger Gerhardsen examined oral transmission in early rabbinic circles and proposed that a more controlled and formal model of orality would more accurately reflect the transmission of the Jesus tradition in early Christian circles, and therefore that the oral traditions present in the Gospels have been fairly reliably and faithfully transmitted. Kenneth E. Bailey, after spending a great deal of time in remote and illiterate villages in the Middle East, used his experience with orality in such places to formulate a similar model of controlled transmission within the early Christian communities, but posited an informal mechanism of control, controlled models of the Jesus tradition, and with them an evaluation of the Gospels as possessing greater historical reliability, have been accepted by some scholars in recent years.
However, Thomas R. Yodenoy felt adds that the early followers of Jesus were not interested in simply preserving the past but were also interested in fitting their narratives to suit urgent information, audience interest and creativity in communication and believed that they were in direct communication with Jesus though the Holy Spirit thus making it still difficult for historians to assess the historical reliability of the oral tradition. With regards to Kenneth E. Bailey's studies, Morris Casey writes that they cannot be applied to first-century Jews as they were about of different culture at a different time. Historicity The historicity of the Gospels refers to the reliability and historic character of the four canonical New Testament Gospels as historical documents. Historians subject the Gospels to critical analysis, attempting to differentiate authentic, reliable information from what they judge to be inventions, exaggerations, and alterations. Some Christian scholars maintain that the Gospels are inerrant descriptions of the life of Jesus. E.P. Sanders asserts that all four of the Gospels meet the five criteria for historical reliability. But Howard Teeple has concluded that the Gospels provide no historical information about Jesus's life since the first Gospel account may have appeared as much as 40 years after Jesus's death. There are positions between these extremes. Some biblical scholars consider the Synoptic Gospels to contain much reliable historical information about the historical Jesus as a Galilean teacher, and of the religious movement he founded. But not everything contained in the Gospels is considered to be historically reliable. Reza Aslan asserts that the Gospels are not, nor were they ever meant to be, a historical documentation of Jesus's life. These are not eyewitness accounts of Jesus's words and deeds recorded by people who knew him. They are testimonies of faith composed by communities of faith written many years after the events they describe. Simply put, the Gospels tell us about Jesus the Christ, not Jesus the man. The baptism of Jesus and the crucifixion of Jesus are events almost universally agreed upon by biblical scholars to be historically authentic. Elements whose historical authenticity is disputed include the two accounts of the nativity of Jesus, as well as certain details about the crucifixion and the resurrection. Contents The four Gospels present different narratives, reflecting different intents on the parts of their authors. All four Gospels portray Jesus as leading a group of disciples, performing miracles, preaching in Jerusalem, being crucified, and rising from the dead. The Synoptic Gospels represent Jesus as an exorcist and healer who preached in parables about the coming kingdom of God. He preached first in Galilee and later in Jerusalem, where he cleansed the temple. He states that he offers no sign as proof or only the sign of Jonah. In Mark, apparently written with a Roman audience in mind, Jesus is a heroic man of action, given to powerful emotions, including agony. In Matthew, apparently written for a Jewish audience, Jesus is repeatedly called out as the fulfillment of Hebrew prophecy. In Luke, apparently written for Gentiles, Jesus is especially concerned with the poor. Luke emphasizes the importance of prayer and the action of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' life and in the Christian community. Jesus appears as a stoic supernatural being, unmoved even by his own crucifixion. Like Matthew, Luke insists that salvation offered by Christ is for all, and not the Jews only. The Gospel of John represents Jesus as an incarnation of the Eternal Word, who spoke no parables, talked extensively about himself, and did not explicitly refer to a second coming. Jesus preaches in Jerusalem, launching his ministry with the cleansing of the temple. He performs several miracles as signs, most of them not found in the synoptics. The Gospel of John ends. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Genre One important aspect of the study of the Gospels is the genre under which they fall. Genre is a key convention guiding both the composition and the interpretation of writings. Whether the Gospel authors set out to write novels, myths, 
histories, or biographies has a tremendous impact on how they ought to be interpreted. If, for example, Rudolf Bultmann was correct, and the Gospel authors had no interest in history or in the historical Jesus, then the Gospels must be read and interpreted in this light. However, some recent studies suggest that the genre of the Gospels ought to be situated within the realm of ancient biography. Although not without critics, the position that the Gospels are a type of ancient biography is the consensus among scholars today.